tour ko kayo dito sa uh, Marina Bay Garden. And plants surrounding you. You will notice plants selected for their splendid gold-hued foliage and flowers. This is Singapore's latest horticultural wonder. A project that began with an international design competition in 2006 and opened in 2012. You are now in Bay South Garden, home of the spectacular super trees, cool conservatories and much more. Your garden. Towering in front is one of the two cooled conservatories, the Cloud Forest. This cool, moist conservatory is 65 meters tall and Singapore's tallest indoor waterfall. Look through its glass shell and you will notice elevated walkways winding round the man-made mountainside. They are covered in mist every two hours, replicating the cool, moist climate of tropical high elevation areas such as Mount Kinabalu. This controlled climate is perfect for growing unique plants on the man-made mountain. Approaching on your right is the Sun Pavilion. It houses a rich collection of cacti, the most recognizable plant family in the desert. Up ahead is the Far East Organization Children's Garden. Covering one hectare of undulating terrain, the nature-themed play area features a toddler's play zone rainforest tree houses and a water play experience the children's garden is designed to inspire children of all ages to foster an affinity for nature together with their families you are now entering the waterfront walk which connects bay south to bay east via marina barrage behind you Across Marina Reservoir, you will see Bay East, the second of three gardens of Gardens by the Bay. Bay East is open 24 hours daily, offering a superb view of the city skyline along its waterfront promenade. Back here at Bay South, proudly fronting the Marina Reservoir, are its two star attractions, the Cloud Forest to your left and the Flower Dome up ahead. Marvels of architecture, their design is dictated by light. Look into the conservatories and you will see no pillars inside, as these cast shadows which limit plant growth. Instead, a grid shell is anchored by rows of external arches. This structure allows sunlight in any time of the day, which promotes plant photosynthesis. The giant grid shell supports thousands of glass panels. These panels are treated to maximize sunlight penetration while keeping the heat out. Two plants growing on and around its three super trees. Look left into the distance ahead and you will notice another three super trees. Can you see a spout on top of one of them? Super trees have many functions, one of which is to expel hot air from the conservatories. We will visit more of them at the Super Tree Grove later on our tour. Catch a glimpse of the Dragonfly Lake on the right. There is a 440 meter boardwalk beside to stroll or jog along. The Marina Reservoir and two lakes surround Bay South, providing irrigation for plants and a cool respite for visitors. The reed bed to your right acts as a natural eco-filter to cleanse water from rain runoff. The reeds help improve the lake's water quality by absorbing excess nitrogen and phosphorus. You are now entering the Heritage Gardens, which showcases the plants that occupy a special place in the history and culture of Singapore's main ethnic groups. Welcome to the Indian Garden. Can you spot the national tree of India here? It's right in the middle of the Indian garden, the banyan tree, also called the Bengal fig. With its tangle of roots and branches, the banyan symbolizes eternal life for Hindus. Plants and especially trees have huge cultural and religious significance for the Indians.
In front of you, a circular opening in the wall welcomes you into the Chinese garden. This is called a moon gate, a feature found in traditional Chinese gardens and represents a full moon. For the Chinese, a garden is a reproduction of the natural environment. That's why features like ponds and boulders are common in classical Chinese gardens. A rock represents a mountain, and water stands for rivers and waterfalls. You are entering the Malay Garden, a third of the heritage gardens. The timber structure coming up on the right is an example of a traditional village residence known as a kampong house. There are many food plants here used by the Malays, such as lemongrass and the breadfruit tree on your right. Check out the mighty super trees on your left. You'll see the 22 meter high OCBC Skyway suspended from the taller super trees. This aerial walkway offers a panoramic view of Bay South and the surrounding Marina Bay area. Vertical guard night, special light and sound effects turn the super tree grove into a spectacle you won't want to miss. The last of the heritage gardens is a horticultural representation of Singapore's colonial past. The fringy penny with its white flowers were chosen to match the black and white houses of the early British planters in Singapore. Important cash crops they brought in in the 1800s are featured here. To the right are the Brazilian rubber tree and the African oil palm. You are now leaving the Heritage Gardens, one of the two themed gardens at Bay South. We hope you've enjoyed learning about Singapore's culture and heritage through the plants you have just seen. You are approaching a stupendous white baby sculpture called Planet by British artist Mark Quinn. The sculpture's surroundings reflect the white theme of the colonial garden. It is the most significant of the many sculptures around the gardens, which include water buffaloes, horses and dragonflies. Every super tree is a vertical garden rising from 25 to 50 meters high. These trees draw inspiration from the dominant trees of our rainforests that cannot grow to such heights in our urban environment. The tallest super tree is as high as a 16-story building. These green giants perform the functions of real trees, such as absorbing heat and harnessing solar energy via solar panels atop their canopies. This energy is sufficient to light up the trees at night. They also collect and store rainwater, which is used to irrigate the plants that grow on their trunks. To your right, these energetic fish provide a burst of color and vibrancy along this walkway. Because the koi fish is believed to bring prosperity, keeping and breeding them is quite popular in Singapore. Observe the palm trees coming up ahead and you will spot something strange. Most palms have a single trunk, but these mutated trees have two and even three trunks, rarities in the plant world. Try to imagine a world. This is the fruits and flowers garden. Pollinated flowers develop into fruits with seeds. The fruits of the cannonball trees on your left and right expel their seeds when they explode on impact, giving the tree its name. 
Plants and trees also reproduce by dispersing seeds through wind, water, or animals. Not all plants require direct sunlight to flourish. Explore the dark side of the rainforest in the understory garden. Organisms on the forest floor have found ways to survive under low light conditions. Fungi, like the mushroom sculptures you see on your right, help to break up fallen leaves and twigs into rich nutrients for vegetation. You are entering the world of palms garden. Palm trees are important components of the rainforest, filling its mid and lower strata and providing food to birds and animals. Rattan is used for furniture and car wax is made from a Brazilian palm, canoba. Look to your right behind the palm trees and you will see the energy center, a marvel of sustainable energy. Tons of horticultural waste collected from parks every day is burned to power turbines that help cool the flower dome and cloud forest. At the Secret Life of Trees Garden, learn all about trees and their wondrous forms. On your left and right, the leaves of the snowflake trees resemble the lettuce structure of a snowflake. Baobabs, which you can see in the flower dome later, are nicknamed overturned trees because their branches look like roots growing into the air. And look out for the thorny trunks of the kapok trees on your right. We are now making a stop at the canopy once again. Okay, okay. Do get off here to visit the two cooled conservatories, which hold a truly global kingdom of plants. They come from every continent except Antarctica. You are now making your way back to the Golden Garden.